Hi there, this is John Solari, the host of the Method Actor Speaks. And by popular demand, I've been people have been asking me and asking me, when are you gonna bring back the one and only, the incomparable Sharon Farrell? So I asked her to come back and she gratefully said thank you, because we have the book to talk about, and I know she as you know, she has some great things to talk about. So, Sharon, thank you for... Oh, thank you. I like this new place. It's kind of fun. He's it's got a new studio, so it's very exciting. And uh, he's been moving like yes. crazy. And I just finished a film down in uh, Santa Fe, California, which is uh, actually just... It's really a suburb of um, San Diego. And uh, it was great because I, hold the book oh, here. okay. This book I have written, and it's a great book. It's a good read. It's a sexy, fast, fun read because I talk about all the affairs I had. You know, people who uh, write, write about uh, their, their careers, they usually, you know, like Raquel Welch. I mean, you pick up her book and you read it and she never had an affair. She never had a facelift. She never, she never did anything. She's like a nun, you know. And it's like she worked with these gorgeous guys and she never did anything. Well, I did everything on everything I ever worked on. <laughs> and so I've got it in the book and I had a great career. I did movies with Steve McQueen and Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee and Peter O'Toole and I could go, I, I, I did 125 films, so I could go on and on and on. Well, what was it but like? This, is, uh, this, this about book, that. this book is called Sharon Farrell, Hollywood Princess from Sioux City, Iowa. And you just go to SharonFarrell.com or Sharon Farrell Actress and there'll be a big list and then you can just click on it. Or you could go to my website and you could like, you could like do it if you want an autograph, you could do it directly to me. And then um, I'll autograph it and send it to you. And I don't, I, I'll send the book out free. My autographs are 20 bucks. So the book, the book and the autograph, and I'll probably throw in a picture to him. When I go to, sh when I go to shows, when I go to these um, autograph shows, autographs are like $20 a piece. And if it would be on the book, it'd be $20. And if it would be on a picture, it'd be $20. Blah, 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 and on and on and on. <laughs> That's the way these, um, these autograph, celebrity autograph shows go anyway. So this is a good read. I get everybody gets so mad at me because every it, every time I do a show or something, I talk about everything but the book. So I'm talking about the book. I had an affair with uh, Che Guevara. I had an affair the with Bruce out Lee. Out it is. They just made a movie about that, didn't they? Just come out with a movie about him. About Che? Yes. Oh, I I I don't think I could handle. I couldn't handle. I, couldn't I was thinking handle. of you when I saw I that. I couldn't. I couldn't. Handle. I let think they did one on Bruce Lee too, Sharon, and I didn't see that something. either. I get too emotional. I just go, I flip back into like, oh my God, they're going to show up, and and I'm going to be with them in a minute. I don't know. I just uh, time is like crazy for me. Maybe yeah. it is with everybody else too. You know, it's like you're if you had a good time so, at some point, you can just think about it, and you're there. You're waiting for the phone to ring. You know, I don't know. I'm like that. Are you like that? A little bit, but I want to ask you. Why did you write the book? Oh, well, I wrote it. Oh, gosh. I wrote it because I was, I was living in Fiji. I took an early retirement, and I went to Fiji, and I built a house in Fiji. And I got raped in Fiji by the military. There were a couple of coups, and I was all beat up, and I, my teeth are knocked out, and I was just, just a mess. And I, I, I didn't even think about coming back to the United States. What I did was I, was, I went to New Zealand, and I, I collapsed at the airport there, and um, the gal recognized me from The Young and the Restless, the uh, manager of um, Air New Zealand, recognized me from The Young and the Restless. They went through all my bags and stuff, and because I was like out of it. And uh, they went through my bags, and they, um, they found Sam Jones's number. He was like Flash Gordon in, oh. in Flash Gordon. He played Flash Gordon. Right. And uh, they found my, uh, he, they called him, he called my son and they arranged for me to fly back to the U.S. because I was just going to go to, to New Zealand and I was just going to get fixed up there because they have doctors there. They're, they don't have anything in, in, in uh, Fiji. I mean, if you are out on the ocean, there is no Coast Guard. You are out there by yourself. And if you get the bends or something from like diving too deep, they have to fly you to New Zealand, which is like a couple of hours. You know, I mean, there's, you go to Fiji and you, if you stay in the hotel, you're fine. You just do not leave. You don't go around. 
you, you just don't go around. Unless you go with a group of people. If you go with a group of people, you're fine, but you cannot go alone, especially a woman. And I was going alone everywhere, so I was in the wrong place at the wrong time when the... When the um, so that's why you wrote the book? Well, no, oh, no, no. Well, I got back here, right. and I went. I, I couldn't get into the motion picture hospital f to help me for my, for my health reasons and stuff like this, because... Uh, so, uh, um, Medicare, Medicare takes care of the people in the United States, not in some other country. And I got here, and I didn't have it. And the motion picture hospital said, oh, well, Sharon Farrell, I know we know who you are, but we can't help you. You have to go down to the La Brea office. Because I had been raped. I wanted, I wanted, I, I had to get AIDS tests and stuff like this. And I had scabies. I was a big mess. So I went down to the motion picture hospital on La Brea, and they turned me away. So I was, I was there with a girl, and she says, let's go to the gay and lesbian place. It's, it's just down, down the block a little bit. So we went to the gay and lesbian place, and um, I said that, we said that we were both having affairs with each other, and we were also with guys, and, and we thought we might have AIDS because this guy had AIDS, and we had AIDS, and they helped us. They helped me. I started to get kind of angry. I started to get angry. And I had gone out to I had gone out to Simi Valley at UCLA to a clinic out there. I collapsed there, and I, I had no food. I had no gas money. All my money was in my ex had all my money and didn't I don't know what he wanted me to do. Um, you know I mean it was my money anyway. So he just was keeping it and kind of being difficult and stuff. You know exes. Yes. You, yeah. You've never been married, though. No, I've never been married. Okay, well, look, you get married and you get crazy about this person. <laughs> and it lasts for about three or four years, and then everybody's bored. Everybody wants out. Everybody, that, it, that, that love flips over to hate. Really? And it's, yeah, it does, because the opposite of love really is the indifference, not hate. Now, do you find that mostly in marriages, people you know? Well, every every time I've been with everybody, I've had real long time relationships. I was with this one guy for thirty five years more, and it's like um, we thought we were common law because we lived in Wyoming for a while. We owned property in Wyoming, and in Wyoming, after six months, you're married. Thought we thought we were common law. He got his name on my house and everything else, but I mean everything was over, and he was like siphoning money and putting it someplace. He purchased bunch of, I don't know, he did a bunch of stuff. But, you know, when you're in love with a person or you're with a person, you, and also, I didn't take care of my finances myself. I let him do everything. Why did you do that? Because I'm stupid. No, it's not stupid, is it? That I want to be protected. Won't... I want oh, the man to do yes. stuff. I want him right. to take care of me. I want to be taken care of. Listen I'm going to do the ladies. wash. I'm going to do the wash. I'm going to do the ironing. I'm going to clean the house. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive your car in to have it fixed while you're doing your important things. I'm gonna do all those things for you. So it's like, why can't you like pay the bills? Mm. See, and that's where I got stupid, because I should have been paying my own bills. Because you, it's like a person who's like on a diet, and you have a great big box of C's candy, you know, with or peanut brittle laying there uh -huh. every day. Of course they're going to eat it. You know, you can't leave money around. You can't, you can't leave it around. It's just, you know, it's so easy to put it in your pocket. If you find it, if you find money on the ground, a dollar, don't you just put it in your pocket? You don't run around trying to find the person who dropped it. Except that, I'll tell you something, people really are honest because I was at the, um, I was at, I had to get some new glasses. And I was sitting in the chair and, uh, and the guy next to me, he, he put his hand back here like this, mm -hmm. back there, and he said, oh, I've got $20. Who does this belong to? And he gave it to the gal at the, uh, you know, the gal who checks you in to get your eyes fixed. She, he, what do you call those? Uh, the receptionist. The receptionist. And he was, like, really, really honest. Mm -hmm. He could have just, like, just, oh, he could have just, oh, and then put it in his pocket. He could have done that, and he mm -hmm. didn't. So I found that people, uh, most people are just wonderful. They really are. So, you know, when I first came over to, 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 to do your show, I was so scared of you. I did the Lord's Prayer all the way over. I was really scared of you. I thought you were like some kind of sex addict or something like that. 
because of your website. And then I find out that you're the most gentle, sweet man in the whole world. You're so nice and you're so patient and kind and everything. Well, that's nice. But what did you learn <laughs> from all these experiences? What has been the Oh, benefit? just truck on and just have more experience and have a good time. Really? Yeah, what are you going to do? It's, yeah. There's always something. I mean, right now, my this man that I was I thought I was married to and had a thing. Now he's like um, he got married to somebody else, and he never got a divorce from me. And it's like we got into Fiji with with a marriage license and and being married and my money coming in and we built a house there and we did everything as married for 35 years and we've been doing IRS for 35 years married. married. And now he says he's married to somebody else. He says, well, we were never married. Do single on your income tax. And I said, if I do single, that's like a big lie. So that's why I'm going to call, um, I'm going to call uh, Simon. Martin, uh, Martin Simone. Martin Simone. He's a fabulous lawyer. He's like a Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds was on, what show was Johnny he Carson. Like? He was on Johnny Carson. And, and they, they well, said. Martin, well, Martin represented Lonnie Anderson in a divorce. And when Burt Reynolds was on on uh, Johnny Carson, when Johnny Carson, well, what happened? He says, I had to give her everything. He says, why? Because her lawyer was Sicilian. And her, her the lawyer was Sicilian. That's he had to give her everything. Burt Reynolds Martin had to give her everything. Friend. And this is on the Johnny Carson show. And then they said, why? Because her lawyer was Sicilian. And Martin it was Simone. it was Martin Simone. Martin yeah. Simone. So he's going to give me some advice on how to deal with my bigamist ex, you know. So I don't know. It's sort of a funny comedy when you look at it. it does. He has I mean, a big I mean, you either too. cry, you're gonna cry, you're gonna laugh, and you might as well laugh. You yeah, know? He's, actually, he has a big firm downtown there on Wilshire Boulevard. Uh, but, well, uh, I've never yeah. been there, but I did talk to him one time on the phone, and he gave me some really good advice, and I did it. But now I want to know what to do with this bigamist thing because my lady won't do. She says I'm doing Dale's uh, income tax. I'm doing your income tax. You can't. He can't be married, and you can't be. You can't be married, and he, he's single, and you're you're like been married all this time, you know. And I said, well, you know, unless he gives me my house back, I'm not going to give. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I want my. I want my. I want my toys back. Well, he's you'll been get playing with back. my. He's been playing with my toys long enough, you know. And in your book there, what is one of your favorites, if you would have oh, to talk about? What would you I don't, well, enjoy talking I guess, about? I guess Steve McQueen, that whole thing yeah, was I like agree. really interesting because we were, we were like not really, um, I, well, we were kind of, we I mean, he liked my work. Of course, I did wear, a, I wore a dress to the audition that Bruce Lee helped me find out, and Bruce said, take off that bra, take off your underwear, just, just go with nothing on underneath because you really can't see anything. But... Men will know you're nude. Right. He, he says, but you can't tell, you know. And so I did. And I went to that interview. I went 23 times. And I wore that same dress 23 times. And finally I met Steve and I wore that same dress again. And, uh, but uh, uh, Mark Rydell was the director and he did not want me to cry in this one scene. He said, don't cry. She's a tough broad. She's been a hooker. You know, do not cry. So I did it for him like a zillion times, and Mark had it down. He said, "That's the way I want you to do it." So we go. I go and I meet Steve, and I do it. He says, "Now do it the way you used to. <laughs> now do it the way you used to do it." So I started. I started. I started looking at this little boy, and he said, "You know, and I'm a hooker, and I'm madly in love with Steve McQueen." And he said, well, "You could be a nurse." But still, you know, I just. So I, you know, I, when when Steve saw me cry, you know, and I held it back and just a tear ran down or something, and he said, "Hey, hey, Corey, you got the role." And he didn't even look at the. He he was the producer of it, and he was the star. He didn't even, you know. What was the name started. of that? Film? It was called The Reavers, and it was a Pulitzer right. Prize winning from the Pulitzer Prize winning novel The Reavers by William Faulkner, and Harriet and Irving Ravish wrote it. Was it's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful movie. It was on, um, it was on. I guess it was on Turner like last week. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, the Turner Classics. And yeah. um, it's it's just a lovely, lovely, wonderful movie. Ooh. And my relationship with Steve McQueen went on for years, and. 
he was my hero, and I just I adored him. I I still I still love him, and I still love Bruce Lee. I, those are my two favorites. I guess. Both of them gone too soon. Yeah, and then this new one that I had, Jesse, who was my editor on my book, that lasted four years, but we're still, you know, he's still back, but, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's my relationship with, with, with a man now is like, like different because I was always married and I fooled around. Now, you know, and you know, because if I got, you know, I was with a guy for 35 years who, you know, I had black eyes and broken arms and, you know, he was, he was so, you know, and he, and he didn't make love to me, so I, I was busy elsewhere, and he was too, but we had like this. Is that in the book? Oh yeah, that's in there too. Huh. And it's like, you could read this book and not get into the financial problems I have, but at the same time, it's like I got a roof over my head, I'm driving a, a, a bright green, fabulous new car, and you know, what I- What color green do they Oh, they I don't that? know, they call it uh, Alias, Alias, alias green. green. It's, it's great a color. Alien, Alien. Alien green. Alien green, and it's like a, it's like a lime. Right. I'm driving around yeah. in a lime car. Yeah, it's moving. And it's like a little box, it looks like a yeah. boxy car. And it's so funny <laughs> because whenever, uh, whenever I'd, I'd, pa would, I'd would pass a car like that, Jesse would always say, "Ooh, ick! I don't like that car." <laughs> and I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's why I got it, just because he hated it. Really? Uh, yeah, I do things like that sometimes. You know, it's like if somebody's like mean to me or something, I just, I forgive them and I love them, but I, you know, I can't. You know, it comes out in other ways. You know, I kind of, I don't know. I try. I think I'm getting better. I think I'm kind of rising above things, and I'm not like being like being vindictive. You know, like if somebody does something mean to me, you want to pound them and do something back. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I just. Uh, but if I play with somebody for four, four years, you know, I want my toys back. You know, it's like uh, it's like uh, you know, you think you're with somebody, and you think you have a relationship, and you think you're really together, and you buy them a real expensive gift. You get them like an iPod, uh, iPhone or you know, you buy them something really expensive, and then they're off. They say, "Well, I'm not going to be with you anymore." Well, then give me my, give me that back that I gave you two weeks ago. I don't want you to have that. So I'm sort of an Indian giver. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I am. I I do that, you know, because it's I don't know. Yeah, because I I did that. Where do you think that comes from? Um, I. I don't know. It's probably comes from the fact that I was born first. And then I had all this attention because I was the firstborn and my mom had to get married. And, and they all, you know, the baby was the big thing. And then, like, she got pregnant immediately after. I mean, I think my sister is like nine months younger than me, you know? Uh -huh. And it was like, here I was, the center of attention, and then they'd bring home somebody else. It'd be like if you were married to somebody, and he says, I'm bringing home another wife, and you guys can share the attention. And it's like, you can't explain it to a kid. And I think I just felt displaced. And I think I've been pissed off about that ever since then. <laughs> you know? You know, because I was a little baby and I had all the attention and then I didn't get it anymore. Because if uh, my mom loved me a whole lot and she was holding me and I'm sure I was her favorite because my sister has got the opposite problems where, oh, you tried to get rid of me, because my mom did. She <laughs> sat in hot, hot water, she, she was eating uh, all kinds of food that would like make her have a, a spontaneous abortion. Really? And uh, my mom, my, my, my sister accidentally found out about this. She accidentally found out, so it just hurt her feelings terribly. So, you know, parents, they, you know, they have a hard time, you know? My poor mom, you know, my sister is still, to this day, you know, brings up the fact where you wanted to get rid of me. Well, my mom was like 17 years old. She didn't even finish high school. You know, what did she know? She was like a, a babe in the woods herself, and she did the best she could. And uh, I mean, I love her to, I love her to pieces. She's 92, and she, she just got a car, and she's driving over the curb. She just got a car? Uh, well, she always has had a car, but she, like I send her money, and. She, I, she's, well, I don't send her as much as, I don't know how she does it. Is your mother in Sioux City, Iowa? My mom is in Sioux City, Iowa. The name yeah. of the book. The name of the book. <laughs> she's
Sharon Farrell and Bruce Bruce Miller. When I went back there, Bruce Miller, he's with the um, um, Sioux City Journal. He he got me. He found me so many things. He, he took me to the. Uh, to, they got a museum there. They had a whole section on me, and they gave me lots of pictures to use for the book. And they were just so helpful. I mean, they were Bruce. Bruce Miller was just uh, incredibly helpful and nice. And he's going to do a review of the book. And um, and I said, I don't even care if you don't like it. If you think it's terrible, because. You know, I kind of did say some things that weren't like too positive about Sioux City, but if I had thought it was such a wonderful place, I never would have left. Now, if you, you know? didn't write this book and you read it, what would you, how would you tell people about it? Oh, what would you say about a, it? It's a fun read. You pick it up, you can't put it, put it down, and yet at the same time, you can, if you're like uh, girlfriends, my horny, silly girlfriends that aren't married, they flip to, Ch there's a place you can know the page for Che, you can read about Steve McQueen, you can read about Bruce Lee, you can read about Chuck, you know, Chuck Norris, you can read about uh, uh, David Carradine, you can work, you can, you can, you can, you can go to each movie that I did, and there's like a story on each movie and about the people in it and what happened. And it's so fun. It's fun. And it's. And there's it's, a lot of pictures it, in there, too. There's, lot, there's, lots, there's, some, there's lots of pictures. Yeah. And it's just fun. It's, what was, um, let's talk about David Carradine. Oh. Now that's a family of actors. Yeah. What I, was I did like a wonderful with? painting of him. That, really? Yeah. I did a fabulous painting of him. You and, did it? Uh, you, yeah, you I painted, painted it. And uh, it's on my website. I think it's on my website. The paintings? No, I don't. Maybe it, the pa my paintings are on my website. And I sell them like maybe one or two a year. Really? Yeah. And um, um, it's at SharonFarrell.com or .net. Just Sharon Farrell Actress. And you'll get to a long list of like stuff you want to see. You can go to my website. Or you can, you, can see, you can see your shows that I've done with you. Or, right. you know, like whatever is happening, you know, you can go. And other actors that might be watching this, if you want to get on the show, make friends with John Solari on his Facebook page. Just do Facebook, and he's got his phone number there. And call and come do the show. If you have a passion about the arts, if you have a method about the way you sing, you dance, the way you, you write, the way you act, if you have a certain method and you have passion, come do this show. Sit right here and, and tell John Will everything. We do it. Yeah, that's we'll true. Do. That's true because I, I think this show is like the best show that's on the air. Well, thank you, but it really uh, well, is. It's so people important. People like you will make it good. I don't. Oh, it's, I just put you on. Well, you ask the right questions and you get stuff out of people, and it's always so exciting and it's fun and it's funny. Everybody's always saying something outrageous. I love it. Well, you, I love yeah. it. Chris Pennock, remember when he was on? Oh, yes. he was a riot. He was <laughs> such such a fun guy. And I'm a I'm a I'm a Facebook friend of his now. So I've made friends from doing your show. Everybody that I've done your show with, of course, there's a couple that I don't. There was that. Well, then we leave that out. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't cost yeah. nothing to be nice. Oh, I know, I know. She was not really well. very nice. It, well, let's get you know, back it wasn't to about me. I wasn't even on the show. It was the Indian lady. What was get back to the, David Carradine? What was it like working with him? Oh, or, he was. Do you fun. have any stories he, you'd what, like to what tell? What he did was he set he he set he and Chuck Norris both set up with the uh, with a great gym, this weightlifting gym. Uh huh. They set up so we could go there every day, and you know we were we were shooting in El Paso, Texas, so it was really really hot, and. I, we went to the gym, Barbara Carrera was in it, and oh gosh, there was a really a great cast. I, I just can't remember all the names, uh, Barbara Carrera. Um, um, Beautiful woman. Oh, oh yeah, she's gorgeous. Very elegant. And she's one of my, she's, she's my, she's my very, very best friend. I mean, I uh, hang out with her a lot. She's my friend. Yeah, I know. And um, I mean, I see her like once a week, and we go for long walks and do yoga together, and chant and do all this esoteric stuff together. She's just fabulous. I love her. And uh, but David was. Uh, I went by his. I went by his door one day, and it was like kind of cracked open. And uh, he said, hey, "Come on in." So I I open the door just a, just a little, and I look in, and he's like on his back. I mean, he's like he's like he's like got himself. Like uh, tied up, kind of. 
you know, like this, uh -huh. both like, I don't know what that's called when you're, you look like a chicken and you're going to stick it in a roast or something, you know? <laughs> and he was, and I just I stood there, I just stood there like with my mouth open and, and it's all of a sudden this girl, this girl opens the door all the way and she, and she goes in, it's a beautiful oriental girl, and, and, and he says, well, Sharon can come in. And she said no, and she slammed the door in my face. Yeah. And then when I found out that he had died, I figured he was tied up somehow. He was doing like some kind of, he was just kind of kinky. You know, I didn't really know about that kind of thing before. I mean, and I don't like that. I mean, that is not my turn on. That's not a turn on for me, but it is for other people. Other people yeah. And it's like, it, I mean, you know, putting handcuffs on, you know, people like put handcuffs on and they handcuffed you to the bed. That's supposed to be sexy. Yeah. That, I don't know. I, I That doesn't turn me on. I think those, I, look, they hurt, number one. And if you want to touch somebody or something, you can't because your hands are up like yeah. this. And I don't know, it's like, it's not, not a good feeling to me. I don't like it. But, uh, you know, and, and getting spanked and all that, I, I just don't get into that. But, you know, other people do, and that's great. But I just don't like that. I like, I like other things. I like other kinky things. So, so. With that, we're going to come back with part two, and we're going to talk about you up for an award. Oh, oh, we'll yeah. We'll talk about oh, that yeah, that's awesome. in a moment. So once again, okay. this is John Solari, and grateful... And buy this book. It's wonderful. Say the name again. Let me just get it even quieter. Close to that. There we go. Sharon Farrell, Hollywood Princess from Sioux City, Iowa. And the princess from Sioux City, Iowa is kind of like, I don't know what you call it. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a joke, like, you know, because you're a princess. And I'm, once I'm, again, there was Steve McQueen. I'm a McQueen. real poor family. I'm like, like, you know, it's like Cinderella. Steve McQueen took Steve, the photo. Steve McQueen took this photograph. And actually, that's why everybody's looking at me, because Steve is in the back taking a picture of me. Okay, that's great. <laughs> we'll be back.